This may come as a surprise, but Wisconsin's location between the Great Lakes and Mississippi River made it a hotbed of prehistoric life. Archaeologists have the proof with numerous excavations over the years. An Oshkosh golf course has been the focus of one of the latest digs involving a group from UW-Milwaukee. And as Michael Schlesinger reports in our Sunday morning spotlight, their discoveries are more than relics. They could actually be the key to unlocking what's in store for the future. We can tell a story about what happened at the site in the past, what people were actually doing. And if you have enough of these sites, then it is our link to what was happening in the past when there were no written records. Dr. Jennifer Haas is a firm believer of unearthing valuable finds in Badgerland dirt. This UWM Milwaukee archaeologist and her fellow researchers have just put the wraps on a multi-year project centered around the former Lakeshore Municipal Golf Course in Oshkosh. This is where the industrial Oshkosh Corporation headquarters now stands. Some of the uncovered finds, by the way, dating back potentially 8,000 years. 8,000 or 9,000 years ago, up to the 1600s, early, early 1700s. Also from the type of materials that we find, we know that the site was most intensively used during the woodland period, and that extends from about 500 BC to AD 900. And during that time, the site was used as a seasonal, um, a seasonal campsite. So people were coming to this area on a seasonal basis, probably in the late spring and summer. They were you know, fishing, they were um, cultivating plants, and then they were going elsewhere over the fall and winter months, probably further inland away from the shore of the, of the lake. In all, some 70,000 artifacts were discovered. Six Native American burials, perhaps with ties from the Menominee or Ho-Chunk nations, were among some of the biggest findings, but there were so many others. Pottery shirts from um, vessels. Um, we found arrowheads, stone tools. We found the debitage from making, from making stone tools. Other types of materials that we found were plant remains. So. Uh, plant remains that are, you know, cooked or in a fire, they become charred, and when they're charred, they become uh, part of the archaeological record. They're actually, you know, you know, preserved. So we found plant remains like nutshell, seeds, corn, a lot of fish remains and animal bone. The 13-acre site was methodically and meticulously excavated with the work of a backhoe and lots of shovels. Woodland, early woodland, see how that's much thinner. Uh, so this is early, early woodland, so this is going to date to 500 B.C. to 80 zero. So and that's just the first pottery that appears in, this, in the state is this very thick ware, and this would be the base of a, of a pot. So we sift it through a screen. Um, the dirt, most of the dirt falls through, and then we pick through it, and we have the artifacts. But then they come back into the lab, and for the pottery, we do some gentle dry, dry brushing and cleaning. How dirty do you get on these digs? <laughs> I, I can't walk onto an archeological site without attracting dirt. <laughs> so, and of course you're working in the dirt. So, you know, uh, it's under your fingernails, it's on your clothes. Dr. Seth Schneider is another UWM archeologist, part of the Cultural Resource Management Group. He too was on hand for the big dig. So we write down all our information in here, talking about what photos were taken, how the shape is, and also describing the different soils and what we actually found in, in the feature as well. The area where the discoveries were made is called the Middle Fox Passageway. It's a link from the Big Lakes to the Big Mississippi. They were fishing and hunting and, and, and uh, cultivating uh, plants for food, so, um, but uh, in the environment wise, it, it was probably a, um, what we call an, uh, an oak savanna or an oak opening where there was oak trees uh, sporadically placed throughout the area. And, um, but also, you know, we have the, the hazelnut and other uh, trees in the area and hickory as well. This is a base of a, of a projectile point that is goes back to about uh, probably 8,000 to 5,000 years ago, uh, it's called a Scott's Bluff Point. Um, and that's the Paleo Indian, so that's um, going way back into Wisconsin prehistory. That's your report, right? Well, that's part of it, <laughs> yes.
That's wow. the big monster report that we sent to the Wisconsin Historical Society that provides the you know, documentation of the field and laboratory work. And it's just the beginning. You know, hopefully future you know, researchers will come back and kind of take a look at the items, kind of take it a step further. What was collected and then extensively analyzed in the UWM lab now goes to the Oshkosh Public Museum, curated for future researchers and possibly part of an exhibit. Archaeologists study people and how people were how we're living, how they were living in the in the past. Archaeology also provides us a long time frame to look at different patterns. And from that we can address you know, issues that are important to us now. See how people adapted over time to changes in you know climate. And that can help us understand now going forward what we might need to do to deal with changes in climate. What do we see here that might be different from those? What's the same? And can it tell us more about how people were living, their social structure, their diet, their, and how is that changing over time as well? What are your findings? What have you learned? Still working on that. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a lot to it. You're never done. Absolutely. There's a, a lot of information out there and you are, ne you are never done. You never will be done. You'll find today's stories and those from previous episodes at cbs58.com slash Sunday morning. And please send your story ideas to Sunday morning at cbs58.com. Do you ever get tired of that sound? No, I'm deaf in one ear. Yet still hearing a need to help others with a bell and kettle. Just the opportunity that she gave us was tremendous. And next, the local source of one of Oprah's favorite things. 